Hello, and welcome to today's webinar on proven strategies to ace and embrace inspirational teaching. My name is Amanda Rothengast, and I will be your moderator for today. Before we introduce our speaker, I would like to mention a couple of ground rules. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted in 24 to 48 hours. If you have questions for our speaker, please feel free to use your question box on your GoToWebinar control panel. I just wanted to let you know that these are part of our monthly webinar series co-hosted by Sanford Inspire and Sanford Harmony. We are thrilled to invite thought leaders in education sharing topics to inspire the best teaching and support social emotional learning. And you will receive a recorded version after the webinar and you can watch it at any time. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce our speaker, Alex Kachitani. Alex is the 2009 California Teacher of the Year and a top four finalist for National Teacher of the Year. He is co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, Inspiration for Teachers. And his first book, Owning It, was named Recommended Reading by the U.S. Department of Education. Alex is also on a mission to get every kid in America to learn their timetables. And to make this happen, he created the popular online program, www.multiplicationnation.com. Alex is a highly sought after keynote speaker who supports and motivates teachers nationwide. And he's known around the world as the Rapid Mathematician. Alex has a popular TED Talk and has been honored at the White House and was featured on the CBS Evening News where Katie Couric exclaimed, I love that guy. Welcome, Alex. All right, how's that? We, we knew we'd get there eventually. Thank you so much. It is absolutely an honor to be spending some time with you this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. I know how valuable your time is, and the fact that you've taken some time out to come join us today is, uh, we are absolutely honored and gonna make it worth your time as well. Before we even get started about talking about inspirational teaching, I got a question for you. And the question is, who is the most inspiring teacher that you have ever known? Go ahead, take a moment, type their name and a word or a phrase that describes them into the question box. And as you do that, Amanda will read out some of the answers that come through. So again, who's the most inspiring teacher you've ever known? And what's a word or a phrase or two that describes them? Go ahead, start typing. Okay, we are starting to get in some answers. Right. This is Briley, compassionate. Mr. Mr. Breyer, engaging and cared about the class, made the learning personal. Miss Swanson, welcoming, warm, and good listener. Mr. Taylor, genuinely caring. Good ones. Right, Mrs. Perez, my yeah. seventh grade math teacher, understanding. Oh, very nice. Those are some wonderful answers. I'm sure there are more. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so hopefully, you know, as we go through today's webinar, you, you kind of hold this person, you know, in, in your head and in your heart as we think about what it means for us to be inspiring and inspirational teachers. A little bit about me first. Uh, I've been a, an educator for many, many years, uh, <clears throat> round in the corner toward about 20 years now. Most of my career, I've been right here at Mission Middle School. Mission is located in uh, Escondido, California, in the northeast corner of 
San Diego. It's actually located in one of the fastest growing high poverty neighborhoods in the entire state of California. So a lot of challenges, but a lot of amazing rewards as well, just like there are challenges and rewards that come with you know, teaching in any kind of school. Here's a picture of some of our fabulous students. 85% uh, of our students are Latino, 10% are white, 5% are black, 90% of our students receive free and reduced price lunch, and two-thirds of our parents haven't finished high school yet. So again, a lot of challenges, but so many opportunities to make such a difference as a teacher who inspires you know, the next generation of, of thinkers and of neighbors and of people. And so, as you heard earlier, uh, I am known now around the world actually as the rap and mathematician, but I have to admit I didn't always start out that way. In fact, several years ago, I was a brand new teacher, just like many of you, absolutely struggling to survive in my classroom. And I couldn't get my students to pay attention. I, I couldn't seem to get them to sit still in their seats. And I certainly couldn't get them to remember, you know, the math rule. I had just taught them what felt like five minutes ago. But what I realized is a rap song would come out on Monday. And by Tuesday, they seemed to have every single word memorized. And so I thought, okay, I got to play on this strength, right? And so one day I had, you know, just had enough. And I thought, I'm going to write my own rap song about the math that I was teaching. And so we were studying adding and subtracting decimals at the time. I wrote a rap song about the decimal point called the itty bitty dot. I went home, I did an internet search for free hip hop rap beats and I actually found one. And I practiced it all night, I will admit, in front of my mirror. And I thought, I am so gonna be the man when I go into school tomorrow. Now, if you know anything about middle school, which I'm sure you do, you already know, uh, let's just say I was not the man. You probably know how this story ends up already. But uh, nevertheless, the students came in, I hit play, I busted out the itty bitty dot. As you can imagine, it was a complete disaster. Uh, my students began laughing at me hysterically, and I'll never forget, I had one student, Josue, he began clutching his stomach and shaking so hard, he actually fell out of his chair, hit his head on the carpet, I had to send him to the nurse for an ice pack. And so I thought, you know, okay, I see exactly where my career is going, right? Yesterday, my students wouldn't pay attention to me. Today, they're laughing at me. Tomorrow, I'll probably be on the job market. But then a really interesting thing happened. Later that day, I was walking to the teacher's lounge for lunch. I walked by the student lunch tables. They were all singing the itty bitty dot. And the next day, something which had never happened to me happened. They actually came excited to be in my class. And I think they ran into my class with the same amount of energy that they normally ran out of my class with. And they were saying things like, oh, Mr. Kajitani, are, are you gonna rap again? Yesterday was the best day ever in math class. And Josue, whose head was all healed now from his big fall, he actually asked me if I was gonna quit teaching and be on MTV full time. And so you're about to see why MTV hasn't exactly called yet. But at the end of the week, my students' test scores on adding and subtracting decimals absolutely shot through the roof. And so I like to say I've been math rapping ever since. And so this is totally and completely embarrassing, but I'm just gonna show you a video that we made of the first song I ever attempted, the itty bitty dot. I promise you my dance moves have gotten much better since filming this video. Okay, I, I still can't dance, but, uh, but uh, here it is, our first ever attempt at making math cool. It's hard to believe that many years later, this video has received, I think, over a quarter million views on YouTube and is now being used in homes and, and classrooms across the world to help engage kids in math and make it cool. So here it is, the itty bitty dot. Now what in the world is that itty bitty dot? Yo, I just can't remember and it's making me distraught. I saw it in the price of the item I just bought. It's the decimal point. Yeah, now you're getting caught. When you add and subtract them, there must be a rule. So listen to my rhyme and use it as a tool. Just line up the dot and give it all you got. I said line up the dot and give it all you got. And when you take the difference, in other words subtraction, just use the same rule and bring on the action. Just line up the dot and give it all you got. Come on, line up the dot 
and give it all you got. So turn off the TV or get the radio station because the itty bitty dot is a mass sensation. Move it to the right and the number becomes greater and the itty bitty dot needs no translator. Move it to the left and the number gets smaller. Yes, the itty bitty dot is an academic scholar. So don't forget the rule which needs no revision because the itty bitty dot is on a great big mission. Line up the dot, give it all you got. Line up the dot, give it all you got. And thus this concludes the decimal song with the rapid mathematician. You can't go wrong. Just line up the dot and give it all you got. I said line up the dot and give it all you got. Just line up the dot and give it all you got. Come on, line up the dot and give it all you got. Just line up the dot and give it all you got. I said line up the dot and give it all you got. Just line up the dot and give it all you got. Come on, line up the dot and give it all you got. Here comes the big spin. There's the big spin. All right. Well, <laughs> hopefully I didn't scare you away from the rest of this webinar right now. But uh, uh, thanks for watching that. Uh, here, uh, you know, I, I have three personal goals. That being said, I have three personal goals for all of the, us on this webinar. The first goal that I have is that you will finish, that you'll go home this afternoon or, or get to dinner tonight or something, and you'll think, wow, you know, I spent a, an hour of my time with National University and Alex, and it was totally worth it. I am so inspired. I believe that inspired teachers make for inspired students, and inspired teachers are highly effective at what they do. So I hope you'll get some inspiration out of our time together today. The second personal goal is implementation, that you get some real actual things that you can use immediately in the classroom to be a highly effective teacher. I don't just want this to be entertainment. I want you to have real tools and strategies that you can use. And the third personal goal I have for all of us is that you never sit there thinking to yourself, geez, I wish Alex would hurry up. I really have to pee. So don't worry, I'm gonna keep it moving. I'm gonna keep it grooving. I'm gonna make sure we end on time or even a little bit early. I got you covered, okay? I'm gonna make this totally worth your time. So along with inspiration and implementation, we are going for no constipation this afternoon, okay? That is my goal to you. And so what I wanna do is I wanna share with you four lessons that I've learned along the way about being an inspired and being an inspirational teacher. And the first lesson that I've learned is that if you act like it's cool, then it will be, right? If you act like it's cool, then it will be. What we're really talking about here is engagement. An engaged teacher is one that is truly inspiring. And let's be honest, there is no way that our students are gonna think that what we are teaching is actually pretty cool unless we ourselves think that it's cool as well. So we've gotta be the number one believers in the stuff that we're teaching. It doesn't mean that you know there have to be fireworks going off in our classroom or every lesson plan is an Oscar-worthy performance or anything like that. But we've gotta be the ones who believe the most that the stuff that we're teaching is pretty cool. And so, you know, as I started to watch individual achievement rise in my own classroom, I actually started to research rap music and, and our society. And what I found was fascinating. I found that rap music is actually now the most popular type of music in the entire world. And, you know, contrary to popular belief, most rap music is not sold to minority kids in impoverished neighborhoods. It's sold to white kids in the suburbs. So it is a tool that we can and should be taking advantage of as educators and taking the lessons. Rap music acts like everything that they're talking about is super, super cool, and we should be doing the same thing. And so I gotta tell you, I was, uh, fin uh, the school day was over once of, of many years back, and some of my students came to me after school and they said, uh, hey, Mr. Kajitani, can we talk to you for a second? I said, yeah, sure, what's going on? They said, you know, you're actually a pretty good rapper. They said, your beats are good, your, your rhymes are good, you have a good, strong rapping voice, but hey, um, your dance moves suck. I said, uh, okay, thank you. They said, hey, we have an idea. Next time you make a song, we just joined uh, Beginning Video Technology as part of our after-school uh, um, project-based learning program. They said, give us the song, we'll get out the cameras, we'll do all the filming, we'll do the editing, we'll put you in like a tiny bit at the very end of the video, but for the most part, we're gonna leave you completely out of it. I said, okay, that works for me. So 
I wanted to see if we could make the most uncool thing at our school into something that was really cool and celebrated simply by acting like it was cool. And so I wrote a new song called Test Time. The students did what they said they would, would what they would do. They made, they did all the filming, all the editing. They left me out of it, uh, except for at the very end. Uh, and we well, we started showing it anytime we were giving a big test and the students went crazy and then demanded that we show this video anytime we had a test. So in our attempt to make things cool. Make the uncool cool. Here's test time made completely by our students. Check this out. Hello? What time is it? It's test time. What time is it? It's test time. We'll take that math book off the shelf. It's time for your brain to yourself. Don't matter if you're black. Don't matter if you're white, Latino, or Asian. Yo, we all tight. You know I am the best at solving for X. I might drive a Honda Civic, but you drive a BMX. Yeah, you know what time it is. It's time to take the test. Time to show everybody that you, you are, are the best. best. Yo, multiple choice are the tests I like. And I'll take this test like I grab the mic. What time is, is it? it? It's test time. time. What time is it? It's, it's test, test time. time. I can't wait for this test to begin. With my number two pencil, I'm gonna bubble in. So bring on the test, cause I'm gonna do great. And bad answers, I'll leave with the name. Yeah, I don't know for sure, but hey, I sure get told you know. that an A on the test is a good asshole. Apple. So forget Eminem and MTV, <laughs> the rapping mathematician. Aw, oh, yeah, that's me. What time is it? It's test time. 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 Oh yeah, that's me. And you know what's so funny is I tell you, I still cannot walk across campus without some kid shouting out, Hey, Kajitani, what time is it? And of course, I yell back, it's test time. All right. We'll get back to rapping a little bit later, maybe. But I am a teacher. I have to share some very cool resources with you. Uh, the, if you ever want to make your own rap songs, or if you ever want students to, or poetry, or anything like that, rhymezone.com is an online rhyming dictionary. It's one of the best vocabulary and literacy tools that I have ever seen because you can put in a word, select fine rhymes, it'll come back to you with every word that rhymes with it in the English language, separated by syllables, it'll give you phrases, close rhymes, things like that. And again, it's a great literacy and vocabulary building tool as well because the students, you know, they put in a word like fraction. Here come all the words that rhyme with fraction. And they want to know, you know, what does this word mean? What does this word mean? They click on the word. There's synonyms, definitions, antonyms, things like that. Of course, I got to warn you, I teach eighth graders, right? So what's the first thing a lot of it, a lot of them want to know? You know, let's see if a cuss word works. Yes, it does. So just a heads up, you've been warned. Also, this is one of my new favorite party tricks. It's an app. There's a free version that you can get for your phone. Uh, auto rap very simple you don't have to rhyme you don't have to rap you don't have to sing all you do you hit a button you speak into the phone or the, the device hit a button again and it turns everything you say into a complete professional sounding rap song you can literally have a kid read a paragraph or two from the world history textbook all of a sudden it becomes a really cool rap song but now they're singing about the academic content that they need to know. And that is a huge, huge part of being an inspired teacher, right? Is stop trying to take the curriculum and forcing it into the students' lives, and instead take the students' lives and see where it fits into the curriculum. And here's a great way to take rap music, take something that they already love, combine it with the content that, that they need to know. And then of course, what do they want you to do, right? They want you to play it, they wanna post it, and everybody wins. So definitely check out those two resources. Again, if you act like it's cool, then it will be. The second lesson that I've learned along the way that I wanna share with you is that as teachers, Visibility is everything, right? In order to provide inspiration, you've got to have a good, effective classroom management plan. And effective classroom management leads to inspiration, and inspiration leads to effective classroom management. Now, I have to be honest with you, 
I once had a very difficult year of teaching. It was not actually my first year of teaching. That was very tough, nor was it my second year. That was tough too. The truth is every year is hard, but my toughest ever year of teaching was my eighth year of teaching. Because at the beginning of my eighth year of teaching, I got assigned that class. Now, if you're new to teaching, you may not yet have been assigned that class, but I'll tell you what, it's coming. Ask any veteran teacher you know, and they'll be able to tell you about that class. It is the class that made me drive home crying almost every night. It is the class that seriously made me think about quitting teaching. And what was worse is I had just been named California Teacher of the Year. So everybody wanted to come in and observe me and see what I was doing in my classroom. And they'd walk in and they'd watch me with this disastrous class and they'd walk out going, what's up? That dude's not that good. And so I did what I thought any normal teacher would do. I totally blamed the students. I didn't own it. I just said, ah, it must be on the students, right? I've had seven good years of teaching. What's the problem here? Must be the students. I even found this quote by one of our most famous uh, educators who said, our youth now love luxury. They have bad manners, contempt for authority. They show disrespect for their elders and love chatter in place of exercise. They no longer rise when elders enter the room. They contradict their parents, chatter before company, gobble up their food and tyrannize their teachers. I was like, yes, that is exactly what I'm talking about. That famous educator, Socrates. 450 BC. It's not the students. This one wasn't on them. This one was on me. And I had to own it and embrace it and start to turn things around. And so I won't give you all the details from that year. I'll only give you some of the highlights. Here is how I learned to be highly visible. I want to share some high leverage strategies that you can use immediately to be a highly effective teacher. Maybe you do some of these things, maybe you do them differently or better, I'd love to hear about it. But first of all, right, this one, so you don't have, I, I always do this now at the beginning of the school year. You don't have to do it at the beginning of the school year. You can do it on a Sunday or at the, after a break, whatever. But I always make phone calls home. I just introduce myself. I say, hey, this is Mr. Kajitani. I'm gonna be your math teacher this year. School starts Monday at 7.45. Make sure you're on time, bring a paper and a pencil. Gonna be a great class. We'll see you then takes about a minute per phone call. You can either, you know, if I, if nobody answers, I just move on. If I leave a message, that's fine. Don't stress it. But what happens is you start to form the impression in your student's mind that you are visible to them, not just when you're standing in front of them in class, but when they are sitting at home on a Sunday afternoon watching football. And then, you know, I love it. Many of them show up that first day and they're like, are you the guy who called my house? It's like, that's right. I am now get in here. I can't wait to teach you this year. Second thing, driving to school, you gotta do this. It's called the honk and wave, right? It's happened to all of us. You're almost to school and you're driving to school. You're almost there. You're stopped at a red light. Across the street, you see one of your students. Don't miss this opportunity. Turn your radio down, roll down the window, honk, eh, eh, and just wave, hey. Maybe it's, eh, eh, okay, I'll see you soon. Or maybe it's just a simple, eh, eh, right? Honk and wave. Make sure that you are visible to your students anytime you can outside of classroom. I love it. I love it. I love it. You got to do it. Last or third, wherever you are on campus, just say hi to people, right? Say hi to the students that you walk by. It doesn't mean you have to stop and have a full conversation, but just say hello to them. Just ask them how they're doing. Never walk by a student that you know or even one that you don't know without just saying hello. When you say hello to a student, what you are saying is, I see you, and I value you, and I'm glad that you're here. You know what it took me a long time to learn? Sometimes when we say hi to a student in the morning, that's the first time that an adult has acknowledged them since they left school the day before. Never underestimate how very critical it is to just say hello to a student. During class, visibility is of utmost importance. Greeting students at the door, I call this the number one classroom management strategy of all time, right? It's even backed by research. In classrooms where the teacher greeted the students at the door, there was an increase in student engagement from 45% to 72%. What happens is when you are greeting your students at the door as they walk in, what you are saying without saying it is, 
I'm ready for you. I'm organized, I'm excited about being here, and I am ready for you. I know there are some days when you just can't get there, but the majority of your days, you should be greeting the students at the door. It just sets the tone that you're glad they're here and you're ready for them. Also, this is one of my favorite tricks too. You gotta try this sometimes, right? Let's say you're up at the board, you're writing something on the board, you're talking to your students, and you see in the back, you know, your student Julio is messing around. You don't have to stop class, yell at Julio, tell him to get back on track, then get your, oh, where was I? No, don't do any of that. Just while you're teaching, make a mental note that Julio in the back of your class is messing around. And then wait until your back is completely turned away from Julio and then say, hey, Julio, I need you to sit up and pay attention right now. And then just keep on teaching as if you never said it. You never seen Julio and everybody around him sit up so quickly. You're utilizing the eyes in the back of your head, being visible. And then the only uh, question you need to answer is, yo, how'd you know? Because you're a highly visible teacher. Also, Visibility does not end just because class ends, right? I always have the students stop a few minutes before class cl ends, clean up their desk and their floor, right? I say, hey, this floor was spotless when you walked in. It needs to be spotless when you walk out, right? I even turned it into a little math lesson. I t teach them that the, everybody has a little, little three foot radius around their desk and it's just like their uh, front yard, right? If a piece of trash blows into their front yard, it doesn't really matter who threw it there. It's your front yard, you gotta pick it up. So the students start to manage each other. Piece of trash falls on the floor and they go, hey, that's in my front yard, pick it up, right? I'll tell you right now, if you go to a restaurant tonight and you walk in and the dining room is filthy, get out, right? You don't even want to know what the kitchen looks like. Always have the students clean up for the next students, right? It's good, it's respectful, and it shows that you are a highly visible teacher. Also, always dis I always dismiss my class with a hand signal, not the bell. This is not my hand signal. That's just a picture that I put up there for effect, right? But train your classes from day one, that when they hear that bell at the end of class, that is just a suggestion that class is almost over. At when, when they hear that bell, that means they clean up, they look under their desk, and only when they, and they have to wait until I go like this, here's my hands, and I go. And only when I do that can they get up and leave. Being visible all the way through class. So let me stop and let me ask you, from what I've just shared, which of these strategies can you use immediately in order to be more a more effective teacher? Go ahead, type your question in the question box, and just like last time, Amanda will read through uh, some of the answers that come through. Go ahead, which of these strategies can you use immediately in order to be a more effective teacher? Some answers are starting to come through. Greet each student by name at the door. I love it. All of them. Calling students by name at the door, acknowledging students, clean up desk and the floor. Oh yeah. I always greet my kids at the door and ask how they are doing today. Utilize the eyes on the back of my head. Love it. All right, give us two more, Amanda. Saying hi to all students because all it takes is one, one hello to make a difference in their day. Wonderful. And one more hand signals to quietly get attention and stay on track. Absolutely, hey, wonderful, wonderful answers. Thank you so, so very much. Remember, when it comes to effective classroom management, visibility is everything. The highly visible teacher is the highly inspired and inspirational teacher. The third lesson that I'm gonna, that I wanna share with you that I've learned along the way, and I'm gonna keep this one very, very short, is that as teachers, we have got to, you, we have got to surround ourselves with the best possible people, right? When we look at the reasons why teachers leave the profession, the number two, it's not actually pay, right? The number two reason why teachers actually leave the profession is burnout. According to Adam Grant in his wonderful book, Give and Take, 
the number one way that teachers can avoid burnout is to have a, to surround themselves with a great teacher network. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to surround yourself with the people in your building or the people in your teacher's lounge or the teacher that works next door, right? There are so many ways to build a good teacher network. Maybe it's on Twitter, maybe it's people that you meet at conferences, things like that. But as often as possible, surround yourself with the best, most inspiring people. That way, when you get in a jam, when you start to feel burned out, when you start to feel a little bit low, you can say, okay, you can call up one of your teacher friends or you can go next door or you can grab a teacher as you're walking out to your car in the parking lot and really, really, really surround yourself with people who will keep you up, who will keep you motivated, who will keep you on the cutting edge of what it means to be an inspired teacher today. And so I got to ask you, who are you currently surrounding yourself with? Hopefully it doesn't look something like this. What is the most inspiring thing I ever said to you? Don't be an idiot. Changed my life. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would, I do not do that thing. There it is, right? Simple as that. Who is it that you are surrounding yourself with? That is the number one thing that's going to get you through the hard times. You almost think of your network as, you know, roots of a tree, right? A tree that has really solid roots, a tree that has lots of roots that are deep, that are entangled with the roots of other trees. They're going to be the trees that weather the storm. They're going to be the trees that are able to make it through the, the tough weather or the cold weather. Think of your network as the same thing, right? Who's grounding you? Who are you surrounding yourself with? And please, please, please consider me from this day forward a part of your network. You can always email me, you know, call me anytime. I can talk you through anything. I can, you know, help. You can, anytime you meet somebody who you think is inspiring, make sure that they are a true part of your network. So, so very critical. I could go on and on about that, but I think you got the point. The fourth lesson that I've learned along the way is that as educators, as people who work with teachers, we've just got to be real, right? Our students know when we're faking it and our colleagues know when we're faking it. And I would be willing to bet that at some point, all of us, you know, will at some point work with somebody who we know is just totally faking it. And the only true answer to be truly, truly, truly inspired as a teacher is to just be real. Be real about the challenges that we face. Be real about, you know, the challenges that we face as individual teachers as well as at, you know, as a profession and, and across education. And when I'm talking about being real, you know, first of all, it's important to acknowledge, right? There's there's what you think teaching is. It often looks something like this. Right? We're we're Yoda, right? We're, we're going to guide you, I will. We're, we're going to guide young Skywalker, right? There's, there's what you think teaching is, but then, of course, there's often what the students sometimes think teaching is. To them, sometimes, let's be real, it can look a little bit more like this. Am I right? Get off my back. And so it's just being real about understanding that difference between knowing sometimes how we perceive teaching and how the students with their experiences, present experiences and past experiences are experiencing what's happening in our schools. Important to remember also well, something that Ralph Waldo Emerson said, which is that which we are, we are all the while teaching, right? Yes, we're going to teach them math and we're going to teach them science and we're going to teach them history and PE and music and all of those very important things. But the thing that we are teaching our students more than anything else is simply who we are. They are watching us every single day and every single day is an opportunity to show our students who we are and how we operate in the world, how we talk, how we think how we inspire others so that they can go ahead and do that themselves in their own life. Being real means teaching what is real and connecting the curriculum to the students' real lives. Again, stop always trying to take the curriculum and forcing it into the students' lives and instead take the students' lives and see where it fits into the curriculum. 
Here's one of my favorite games to play with my students. I hope that you'll play this game as well. Uh, it doesn't have to be math. It can be any subject that you teach, but I teach math, so I call it the math professor, right? I don't have any fancy outfits or anything like that. I just stand in front of my class and I say, okay, you guys, there, I believe, I'm the math professor, and I believe that there is nothing that does not have something to do with math. And if my students can think of something that has nothing to do with math, then they can win a prize. And so, you know, it's middle school. I get the same answers all the time. They bring up ketchup and we talk about calories and ratios and proportions and, and cost production. Or my students are really into soccer. So we talk about uh, keeping score and running speeds and distance and angles. And I will admit once I was almost stumped. A student raised their hand and said, Mr. Kajitani, I know something that has nothing to do with math. I said, what? They said, love. I said, huh. And I thought about it and I couldn't think of anything. And just as I was about to admit defeat, another student raised their hand and said, oh, Mr. Kajitani, I know something that, uh, that I know some, a way that math has to do with love. I said, what? They said, when you're in love, that can be very expensive. And another student raised their hand and said, oh, I know in math, one plus one equals two. But if you're in love and you're not careful, one plus one might equal three. That's when I had to use two words all teachers must at some point use. Moving on. Yeah, we got to say that sometimes. You know, being real means being realistic and, and taking charge, but asking for help. You know what the one thing that it never occurred to me to do during that year with that class it never occurred to me to ask one of my colleagues for help. Here I was telling my students, hey, if you ever need help, don't be afraid to ask. Let me know if you have any questions. And I never asked for it myself. And it wasn't until one day our dean of students came in and he needed to watch my class while I went and signed something. And uh, he watched my class for a while. He came back after school and said, hey, that's a tough class. I said, yeah. He said, let me help you. I said, huh, I never thought about that. It never occurred to me to just ask for help. Again, when you surround yourself with good people, and even if you don't, reach out to your fellow colleagues and ask them for help when you get stuck. They'll get you out of it every single time. Finally, being real means to just rely on who you are and, and to understand that you are enough, right? You don't have to be, you know, the superstar teacher that is in some Hollywood movie that seems to be able to get every single teacher to do the, every single student to do their homework every single time or always seems to, to say the right thing at the right time. Teaching is really tough. Teaching is really hard and it's really hard pretty much every single day. But I truly believe that it is the greatest profession that was ever created. It is the profession that creates all other professions. So just rely on who you are, right? Just rely on your experiences and, and everything that you've learned up to this point. The teacher that you are today is not going to be the teacher that you are tomorrow. And the teacher that you are tomorrow is not going to be the teacher that you are 5, 10, 20 years from now because you're just going to keep on developing you know, getting more strategies, getting more experience. And so the best thing to do is just to rely on, on who you are and, and what you, what's brought you to this point, you know, all, all the way up to this point, I should say. And so I want to share with you, here's a poster that I it hangs in my classroom. It's just a simple poster. It's a way to get students to uh, format their homework paper for my math class. You have to write their assignment at the top left. You may have had to do this when you were in algebra, their name, date, and period on the top right. They have to Number each problem, keep their number straight, circle the final answer, skip lines between problems, things like that. The only difference is, I call this format the Kajitani style, right? So when I'm walking around checking off homework, I don't have to say, hey, Maricela, how come you didn't circle your final answer? I just say, hey, is that Kajitani style? And she says, no, and she has to fix it. But what happens is, over the course of the school year, Kajitani style becomes something much more than just how you format your homework paper, right? It starts to become a part of the culture of our classroom. So when I walk in with a new haircut, the kids go, hey, nice haircut. That's a Kajitani style cut right there. Or once, you know, I spilled mustard on my shirt at lunch and I tried to clean it off, but there was still this big stain there. So I just owned it. I walked in. I said, check it out, you guys. Mustard on the shirt. That's the new Kajitani style. And yeah, they didn't really go for that one either. But what happens is over the course of the school year, the students 
start to own their own styles and a loud and rambunctious student like Myra, we just get to celebrate that as Myra's style or a quiet and shy kid like Victor, we just get to say, yeah, that's Victor's style. And all of the weird and awkward things that our students walk in thinking about themselves, instead, we just get to celebrate that as their style. Let's be honest, all the weird and awkward things that we as adults sometimes walk into a room thinking about ourselves, what if instead we could just celebrate that as our style? And you know, that's what I learned being cool really is. It's just being comfortable with who you are and what you do. I mean, when I first started rapping, I, I thought I had to be like Snoop Dogg or, or Dr. Dre. And you know, I'm still hopeful, but I just had to become comfortable being that weird and wacky math teacher who was willing to get up and rap about you know math. And the truth is, it's not about rapping. It was never about rapping. I hope you don't think that I'm saying that you know now you have to be a rapper too. No, it's just about taking the things that you love. It's about paying attention to the things that your students love and putting it into the work that you do every single day and owning the work that you do and owning your style every single day in order to let yourself, your students, and the curriculum shine through. And so what I want you to think about is what is your last name followed by the word style, right? What does it mean to be your last name followed by the word style? And here's what we're going to do. I have a copy of one of my books right here, Chicken Soup for the Soul, Inspiration for Teachers, and I am going to give away a signed copy in just a moment. Here's what we're going to do. In the question box, I want you to type in your last name followed by the word style. And the, Amanda's going to count the sixth person, the sixth person to type in their last name followed by the word style is going to win a copy of this book. So go for it. Type in your last name, followed by the word style. Here we go. Amanda's going to start reading them out as they start coming through. Wow, we're getting a lot. All right. We have Jackson style. We have Sereno style. We have Ellis style. We have Matthew style. We have Alvarado style. We have Evan style, Pena style, Ross style. And it looks like, let me see who is the sixth one. Number six to go through. It's like Jackson style, Carol Jackson. Very nice. So Carol Jackson, here's what you need to do. If you just go to my website, I'll, we'll give you the information, but my website is alexkajitani.com, just my name, first and last name.com. Just click on the contact form and just contact me through uh, my website and give me your address and I will send you a copy, a signed copy of inspiration for teachers. So congratulations, uh, Jackson style, and uh, to all of you as well for starting to own your own style. All right. And Carol responded, yay, thanks yay, so much. Nice. Excellent. And for the rest of you, uh, also, you know, feel free at any point, please check out my website, alexkajitani.com. You can contact me anytime through there. I answer every email that has ever, you know, intentionally sent to me. Please consider me a part of your network. Uh, and, you know, I just want to also, we're, we're not quite through yet, but take this time to send a huge thanks to National University, Amanda and her team. You are truly a part of something absolutely fantastic that is transforming education and the way that we train educators. Also, if you're looking for something good to read, again, uh, there's Chicken Soup for the Soul, Inspiration for Teachers. Also, my book, Owning It, is packed with some of the strategies that I've shared today, uh, as long as lots and lots of other strategies on how you can be a highly effective teacher who absolutely loves what you do. It's available on Amazon, everywhere, pretty much. And also, you know, I never want this conversation to be the end. I never want to be the speaker who you hear from and you never hear, who presents and you never hear from him again. So please, if you're on Facebook, send me a friend request. Let's make this the beginning of the conversation, not the end of it. Let's follow each other on Twitter. Let's follow each other on Instagram, whatever, you know, however suits you best. Let's be in each other's network for the rest of your career. All right. So just to recap, four lessons that I've learned along the way. Remember, if you act like it's cool, then it will be. It's all about engagement. Visibility is everything. Surround yourself with the best, and above all, be real. 
thank you for all you do for students every single day. Let's take a moment and go ahead one more time in the question box. Name one thing that you've learned or confirmed today that you can use to be an inspirational teacher. And as always, Amanda will read out some of the answers. What's one thing you've learned or confirmed today that you can use to be an inspirational teacher? Go for it. Be cool and you will be. That's right. Surround yourself with positive people. Continue to say hi to all students, to staff and students on campus. I'm going to try to rap to my second graders. Ah, very nice. Incorporating pop culture into your lecture. Engage students with fun ways to learn, like using the rap generator for content. Very cool. All right, give Connect us three. Connect the curriculum to students' lives. Very nice, and one more. Let students know you really care about them. Absolutely, wow, I'm sure that there are many, many more answers, but uh, I wanna get to your questions as well. And so let's take a moment, if you have questions, comments, things like that, um, that uh, you wanna ask, we've still got some time. Uh, so what are your questions? What's coming up? What, uh, what can I answer for you? Alex, while we're waiting for questions to come in, I wanted to ask you, who inspired you? Wow, yeah, that's a, a really good question. You know, I, um, I obviously had some very inspirational teachers myself that were really fantastic. I'll, I'll never forget my speech teacher, Mr. Lara. Now, you know, it's funny because now I, I speak professionally all over the country at conferences large and small, but I was not always a, a really great speaker. And so I'll never forget my... Um, my ninth grade speech teacher, Mr. Lara, who just through the process of, you know, making me get up time and time again in front of my class and think about what I was going to say and, and how I was going to deliver it really inspired me to really have the confidence to get up and speak in front of crowds. And thank you, Mr. Lara, you inspired me because I never knew that I was going to be doing it, you know, almost every single day, either as a teacher or as a, a professional speaker at conferences. Uh, but the things that I learned in your speech class are things that I carry with me every single day, both personally as well as professionally. And so, you know, other teachers, I also think that, you know, we can really draw inspiration from pretty much anybody we meet, even sometimes when, you know, sometimes you meet somebody who might be a tough personality or somebody who you don't necessarily get along with. Sometimes I'll, I'll stop, even when you've got that really, really challenging student, I'll stop and I'll ask myself, okay, what inspiration can I draw from this person? And when we are able to extract inspir inspiration from just about anybody, even if it's just inspiring us to do something, you know, to create a world different than the world that somebody we might meet what is, is going for, when we can extract inspiration from every situation, or at least try to, that, that lends huge to our own development as inspirational teachers. Great, thank you for Great. sharing that. We have some other questions coming in. How have you seen the status of the profession grow? How have I seen the status of the profession grow? Yeah, that's a great question because obviously the you know the the flip the alternative question you know that a lot of people are asking is about sort of the 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 minimalizing of the profession. I think first of all, um, I think that you know parents first of all parents are so busy these days. Parents are so busy you know, trying to, you know, make ends meet, trying to hold down lives of their own, trying to keep their family intact and, and get, you know, create opportunities for their kids, that parents, especially now with how busy they are, have really come to, uh, to, to really respect and to really celebrate how challenging it is and how valuable it is to have a truly effective and inspiring teacher. Not only do they remember inspiring teachers of their own, but parents have really, you know, are really with, with getting busier and busier, coming to really see how important the role is that teachers 
play in, you know, in their own very lives. Um, I also think that, you know, as, as many of us have heard, the teaching, the teaching workforce is shrinking, right? And so a lot right now, a lot of states are starting to experience some small teacher shortages and some mass teacher shortages, especially when it comes to uh, recruiting teachers of color and male teachers, and especially, especially male teachers of color. Um, and so as the teaching shortage has begun or has really drastically started to, sh as the teaching shortage has grown, I do think that public opinion is really starting to see how valuable it is. And so how valuable it is that we need teachers. And unfortunately, I, you know, I, I hope that it doesn't get to the point where we are absolutely desperate, although some might argue that we're already desperate, but uh, hopefully that, you know, as teachers, as highly inspired and effective teachers get harder and harder to find, we will, as a society, really start to realize, you know, how how important it is and how important it is to to really train teachers and to help teachers flourish, which is, you know, why I'm so excited to be working with National University and to be doing things like this webinar to to help grow that teacher profession. You know, and finally, I also think that with social media, teachers have a, a level of visibility that they have never had before. Every teacher now who's on Twitter, who's on Facebook, Instagram, you know, who has their own blog, email list, whatever, you now have this network that you can share your resources with. And so, you know, Pinterest, I and mean, there are conferences, there are so many ways that teachers can share the work that they are doing. So what I encourage you to do is, if you are doing something amazing, if something fantastic is happening, if anything is happening in your classroom, share that with your network. And you know, sometimes we've got to be our own marketing department. Share it with your network, share it on social media, share it with your, your people both inside as well as outside of education so that together we can all continue you know, to uplift this profession, which, uh, which, is, which can be very challenging, especially right now. Great question. We have time for one more question. Here's a good one. From where do you learn more about teaching experience or courses? From where do I learn? Yeah, so I, 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 well, I speak at a lot of conferences. Conferences are one of my favorite places to go because what it does is um, kind of gets people out of their school building, gets people away from, gets teachers especially away from the people that they, you know, sit in the lounge with all day. Sometimes it's cool to go to conferences with your colleagues as well. I love going to conferences, sitting in on different sessions. Um, you know, sometimes I'm keynoting the conference, sometimes I'm just there as an attendee. I, I love it all. I love to even, you know, walk through the exhibit halls, things like that. So that's one place, conferences. Um, a lot of teachers these days are going to Twitter uh, and, you know, forming that, you know, per, per, personal uh, learning network or professional learning network. A lot of teachers are on Twitter now following, you know, the cool thing about Twitter is you can follow superstars in education as they you know share their thoughts share the things that they're producing so online is is a really good one and you know i have to say don't forget about the colleague next door sometimes some of the best professional development comes from walking out to the parking lot you see one of your colleagues and you you ask them you say hey you know today i really struggled with teaching you know adding fractions how do you teach that. Don't forget to tap into the people who are right next to you and right around you. One thing I always recommend you do, go to your principal and say to your principal, hey, who are some of the most highly effective teachers on this campus? They'll tell you, right? Or go to any you know teacher who you respect, ask them who the most highly effective teachers. Now, notice I don't say best teacher. Notice I don't necessarily say happiest teacher. I say highly effective teachers because there's teaching and there's learning, right? Some teachers teach all day, but it is the teachers who get their students to truly learn that are highly effective. Just ask, who are the most effective teachers on this campus? Then see if you can sit in on their class, maybe during one of your prep periods, and just watch them teach. Maybe talk to them afterwards about why they were doing what they were doing, and then ask them, hey, who else would you recommend that I see? You can get so much inspiration and professional development from the people that are in your building if you just ask the right questions and make the effort to get into their class and go see them. 
Thank you. And I know there were a few other questions, but I encourage the the guests to reach out to Alex and email him and he can respond yeah. since we are almost out of time here. Very nice. Well, at this point, you know, thank you so much. It has been an absolute honor. I'm going to turn it back over to Amanda, who's going to tell you about some upcoming webinars, one of which is with uh, Darina, one of my absolute favorite speakers. So thank you so much. Again, alexkajitani.com. Uh, if I can help in any way, you can check out all the things that I'm into, watch some videos, sign up for my email list. I, uh, I want to keep teachers inspired all year long. So please, please, please consider me a part of your network and let's stay in contact for the rest of your life. Amanda, back over to you. Wow, Alex. Thank you all for joining us today and for taking time out of your busy schedules to learn about strategies for inspirational teaching. And a big thank you to Alex who provided us with this fabulous presentation and tips to use in your classroom today. Alex, do you have any remaining words for our audience? Uh, just, you know, just that it has been an absolute pleasure. Again, huge thanks to National University, Amanda, to you and your team for what you're doing. And, uh, you know, as teachers, we wake up every single morning to not only create the world as it is, but to create the world as it can someday be. So thank you to all of you who are listening and wake up every day to create the world as it can be. Thank you, Alex. That was truly inspirational. Sanford Inspire and Sanford Harmony are pleased to co-host our next webinar on May 22nd at 10 a.m. with Dorina Sackman Ubuwa. The webinar is titled EI over IQ, Emotional Intelligence and the Resilient Teacher. Ms. Uh, Sackman Ubuwa is known as the lab coat teacher and affectionately Miss Dorito by her students from around the globe. With her unique teaching style, Dorina has spent the last 21 years empowering all students of diverse backgrounds in the K-12 college and adult learner level. A nationally recognized educator and Florida Teacher of the Year, Dorina takes her ELL classroom experience, collaborative teacher workshops, and doctoral research on emotional intelligence and travels the globe as a teacher on loan, inspiring and motivating and empowering teachers, future educators, and the teaching profession. You will soon receive a link to register in just a few days. We hope you will join us for this exciting webinar. Once this webinar comes to a close, a survey will launch on your screen. It's very short and we greatly appreciate your feedback. We do read your feedback and take your responses seriously. To this day, your responses have helped us build more successful webinars. And with that, we look forward to seeing you next month at our next webinar and please enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everybody.